chiropractic. I guess most of the people in the room have tried it at some time. You know, the findings are amazing. It might compete with physiotherapy in terms of treating some back problems, but all other claims are beyond belief and carry a range of significant risks. Now, what happens when a person develops tinnitus is because they're so stressed by it, they develop stress in the first part of the body where stress manifests itself. That is the jaw, the neck, and the shoulders. That's where our stress manifests itself first. So they make the, the wrong assumption that the tinnitus must be connected to all this pain they have in this region. Well, it's got nothing to do with the tinnitus. It's got everything to do with the way they think about their tinnitus. And so off they go to the chiropractor. And there's a tinnitus patient about to receive the life-threatening hallmark high-velocity, low-amplitude low thrust manipulation. This is considered the most powerful chiropractic cure-all. But do you know what they don't tell you? It can rupture the vertebral artery. Now, what's the vertebral artery? That's it there, that little loop part, just at the top of the... Uh, uh, just in, in the neck area. And um, the problem here is that vertebral dissection can ultimately cut off the blood supply to some parts of the brain, which in turn would lead to a stroke. In most serious cases, stroke can lead to permanent brain damage or death. That brings me to the last part of my talk, herbal medicine. Now, this offers some interesting remedies, but they're significantly outnumbered by the unproven, the disproven, and the downright dangerous herbal medicines on the market. Most people think this is the safest of them all. Let me tell you the most popular uh, one that's used by people with tinnitus. It's ginkgo biloba. You'll be told time and time again, ginkgo biloba can cure tinnitus. And if it doesn't cure it, it will at least turn down the volume. Well, what they don't tell you about ginkgo biloba is that it's, um, it's a blood thinner. And if you self-medicate with blood thinners, that's a very, very dangerous thing to do. For a start, if you were taking ginkgo biloba, you would have to get a bleed time uh, test from your doctor regularly because it could very well be that were you rushed in for a surgery, they would not be able to stop the bleeding. However, taken in conjunction with other um, blood thinners, it is life-threatening. That's how it's generally sold in Australia, called tebanin or tabonin. Huge publicity campaign in chemists a couple of years ago. I went into the chemist and I said, can I have a pamphlet on tebanin, please? Yes, by all means. There in the pamphlet, the efficacy has been demonstrated through six clinical trials. I phoned the Australian distributor and said, may I have copies of the trials? Ah, oh, Schwab, uh, Schwab Pharmaceuticals in Germany produces this product. I'll check with them. OK, I'll wait. Schwab said, that'll be fine. You can have the trials. They never, ever came. Never came. I feel that I can talk to people with tinnitus and say something back by fact. Because a trial was done in Britain that meets what is called the gold standard. Now, the gold standard of clinical trials should be randomised, should be double-blinded, and should be placebo-controlled. Such a trial was carried out in 1999 at Birmingham Medical Centre. A year-long study, 1,115 people with tinnitus participated in this gold standard trial. At the end of 12 months, the conclusion, ginkgo biloba, no better than placebo. So when people phone up and say, should I use or try ginkgo biloba, I can quote such a study that has used the gold standard. 